Hey everybody, Derek from Badgerland Birding here, and today we're going to be talking about how to use eBird. And eBird is a super useful tool when you're out birding, and there's a lot of things you can do with it. So, first of all, we're going to head to eBird.org. It's just e b i r d dot org, and then when you open it up, they switch things around. So now the first thing you see is a very user-friendly page, and this is my profile. Um, you can make your own profile. You put in your name, and then they'll ask you to do a password and email and stuff like that. And I do want to mention that if you go, if you click here and then you go to preferences, if you are concerned about people getting your information, as I know some older birders are, you can actually submit things as an anonymous eBirder. So when you submit stuff, it won't actually say your name or anything like that. And then you can also choose to hide data so it can be used for eBird, but other people won't be able to find it. So you can also adjust your settings about how many emails they send you and things like that. I like to submit it with name, and then you can choose if it's common name, scientific name, both, whatever you want to see there. So one of the cool things about eBird is you can submit sightings and it'll keep track of it for you. So we're gonna go through and make a checklist. We're just gonna kind of make it up. We won't actually submit it. So when you're on eBird, they have an app as well, so you can do it on your phone. And if you do it on the app and you start tracking, so you go to the app, you log in, you hit start birding, it'll put in your location, and it'll actually show where you've gone and it'll have your distance there for you. So you don't have to think about how many miles you traveled or anything like that, and it'll actually show a map. And then as you're going, you can put the birds in because it's kind of hard to remember if you don't do it while you're birding or you don't write it down to think back later to like, oh, what did I see? Like there's species like, you know, house sparrows or cardinals or something. Something you see a lot of you might not really remember that you saw. So if you're doing it on desktop though, we'll hit submit. We will choose a location. There's a menu where you can choose locations that you have birded at or, um, yeah, I think these are locations that you've been at. Or you can find it on a map. So we'll say, we'll go to Wisconsin. And places where people normally bird, they have created hot spots. So these are areas that are well known. So we'll head to the southeastern corner. You can zoom in using the plus right here. And then there's also, you'll see personal locations that show up looking a little bit differently, like this one. Big Bend Drive, I, was, I apparently saw a bird there. So that's personal location, it's blue. These hot spots are orange and they have a little uh, fire symbol on them. So we'll pick this location, we'll say we were at um, 194 East Frontage Road in Kenosha County. So then we'll hit continue. Once we have our location, we'll put the date in. We'll say it was August 20th, 2020. They want you to put an observation type. So if you were traveling, if you walked, if you were stationary, like you were watching a feeder or like, you know, from like a, a building or something like that. Historical is like, hey, I know I saw this bird at some point. I don't have the exact details. So you can still put those settings in. Incidental is like you weren't trying to bird, but you saw birds and that one can be useful too. And then you can do other. So we'll say traveling, like we walked a trail, you put your start time, so we'll put 2 p.m. Duration, we'll say an hour and 30 minutes. Distance, like three miles. Party size, one. Checklist comments, you can put like weather info, anything interesting, or like maybe there was a controlled burn in the area or something you want people to know. Hit continue. This is where you put in all your sightings. So say we saw three wood ducks, like for green wing teal, you can go to a species. So if we want to put like red tailed hawk, it'll pop up. We can add. Then you can also add details. Um, and you can say if there's a breeding code involved, you can age and sex of birds. And then I don't think you can add media right here anymore. Um, I think they want you to do that afterwards. So we can add information in. Uh, details. If it's a rare species, you can hit show rarities, and then the rare species in that area will pop up. And so the species that it suggests are supposed to be common in the area, and then if you want to show rarities, you can. 
If I say I saw a brand, I have to add details because it's rare for the area and media if, you know, you got media. So we'll say like large, say Canada goose like bird with the distinctive mark on neck. Photos taken. You'll want to be a little bit more descriptive. Just be as descriptive as you can. This is just an example. Are you submitting a complete checklist of the birds you were able to identify? Hit yes if you were. Hit no if you weren't. Then hit submit. It'll ask you if you have a rare one. It, they want to make sure that you're putting all the information you have. You hit complete and then you'd hit submit. And then after you hit submit, um, it will take you to a place where you can add media. So let's go, we'll go to a checklist I already did because I actually don't want to submit this. So we will go to my eBird. And this is where you can see checklists you've already made. So here are some checklists. I was just in Grand Isle in Louisiana, so we'll hit view or edit. This is my checklist. Uh, this is the media that I threw in there. So here is, um, here's a picture of a brown pelican. Uh, people can come in here and rate the quality of your photos too. And that kind of helps organize them in the database. So you go to add media, add media, you can select photos from desktop to put in there and then you hit submit and then your checklist should be saved. You can also share it. So if I wanted to share this checklist with someone, I would hit share. I type in their username on eBird and then I would submit that and then they would be able to accept it and it would go on their eBird account too. So one of the great things about eBird is they have this My eBird page where it shows you the species you've observed, how many checklists you made, species with audio. You can also add audio in and the cool thing is it turns it into a spectrogram. So this is an indigo bunting call. Took the audio recording, put it into eBird, converted it into a spectrogram and you can play it and you can visualize the call in the spectrogram, which I think is really awesome. And then uh, experts use those to uh, get uh, subspecies or things like that, especially with crossbills. They will say if it's like type one, type two, type three, and that helps experts distinguish species from each other. And it's just cool to have a database of calls. You can also do days of checklist streak, um, where you, if you submit a checklist like every day, it uh, tells you how many days in a row you've submitted, which is pretty cool. And I think they enter you for like drawings where you can win prizes and stuff. But you can check out your latest checklist. You can check out how you're doing this year compared to last year in a certain region. And if you go to your profile, you can make your own profile and add pictures and stuff. And you make it public or private. It shows you what species you've seen in each county. So the darker the red, the more species you have there. So you can see I have bird in Waukesha County in Wisconsin a lot in Dane County. Some of these other ones I have species, but not as much. And then you can zoom out and get your map of the US to see where you've seen birds or other places too. So you can zoom out and see the world. I have some species in Grenada down here somewhere, but you can't really tell. And then it also shows you your latest photos, your latest checklists and your audio recording. So it keeps it really nice and neat for you, which is something that I love about eBird. Then if we want to find some birds, we can hit explore, we can look at all this data, you can look at the bar charts for your region to find out what birds have been in the area, like what time they normally show up. You can explore certain hotspots if you want to know like what birds have been at Retzer Nature Center, you would go to the Retzer Nature Hotspot and it would show you what birds are found there. You can also add alerts. So if we go here to alerts, I have a bunch of alerts on here. So you can have ABA rarity, so if I subscribe to this, then it would send me information on a specific time frame. So I think you can set it to like daily or multiple times per day. You can subscribe to this and it'll send you an email saying, hey, these are the rare birds that were reported. So you can also do it for county and you can also do it for need. So if you like, if for Wisconsin, if I say I want to subscribe to the rare bird alert, it'll tell me what rare birds are found, are found in Wisconsin from like the last few days. 
and it'll tell me what birds I need in Wisconsin. So it'll say, hey, someone found a long-billed doacher. Or you can say, hey, somebody found a ruddy turnstone. You don't have that yet. It'll be on your needs alert, which is an awesome tool. Very convenient. So you can set up your alerts. And then we can also look at the data. So we can explore by species. Say we want to look up least turn. We can type in least turn. It'll take us to a page with photos, information, and some great maps. So these are audio recordings, pictures, videos, all the information you can need. I like to hit large map, and then you can zoom in. Say we want to go to Wisconsin, because there were a couple of these turns there. It'll show up with this purple frequency, which is, I don't know, it's only so useful. So I like to hit show point sooner and you will get specific hotspots like this sooner. So you can see there are some least turn sightings in Wisconsin. You can also hit explore rich media if you want to see photos. So it'll show you if I click on this, it'll show me that this person has a checklist with a photo and I can click on that checklist and here are the photos. And also you can filter by year. So if I want to just see this year, I can go current year, August to November, set my day rate, and it'll show me sightings for just that specific time period, which is super useful. So that's how you can explore. You can also explore by region. So if you want to check out a certain specific place, you can do that. You can also go to the science tab up here, and it will show you how citizen science settings are helping shape bird data, which is really cool to actually visualize it. And then we covered submit, covered explore, also a bunch of other resources here that you can use. You can do quizzes, talks about um, different bird apps and things like that. You can also go to top 100. So if you're competitive, like we'll take a look at Waksha. I haven't been birding Waksha too, uh, too tight this year. So it'll show the top 200. So it's at number 21 in the list of Waksha burgers. So if you're competitive, you can see where you rank per county, state, things like that. Oh, I'm right by Ryan, that's funny. <laughs> and then uh, you can check that out as well. Go to the about page, it tells you, gives you an introduction video, so you can watch that if you're new. And then also there's a news section and then a help page. If you're interested in that too, you can also donate to them. You can also use other sites like iNaturalist. We'll check that out real quick, just as another um, site. I think eBird is further along than iNaturalist, but you can post, or you can submit pictures, say we found it, and people will help you identify stuff as well. But I think eBird's definitely more the authority for for bird sightings and reports. So that's kind of a basic tutorial on how to use eBird. It's super useful, super fun, uh, great to look through that stuff. And I love being able to submit it and it just has it saved for me. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to calculate anything. It does a lot of stuff for you. It's free to use too. You don't have to pay anything for it. So if you're not on eBird, get on there and put some settings up. It's a lot of fun. So thanks so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.